that when Jesus returns, we will receive a crown of life from Him. Bless us, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. We are very glad today to have the Reverend Dr. Prabhu Das Koshi to deliver God's Word. The Reverend Dr. Prabhu Das Koshi is pastor of Gethsemane Bible Presbyterian Church and he is a member of the ordained council for our brother Ekwi. Uh, the other members are Reverend Tan Kien Seh, Reverend Dr. S.H. To and myself. So Reverend Dr. Das Koshi will preach on the topic, the power and prospect of the ministry. And I'll leave it to him to read the scripture text to all of us. Reverend Dr. Prabhu Das Koshi. thanksgiving to our blessed God, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that I stand before thee to preach God's word. Particularly glad that uh, today the Lord has so worked out the ordination of preacher Lek Ekwi into the ministry of the gospel as a pastor blessed hope be the church and we are very grateful as uh, Dr. Jeffrey Kuhl just mentioned that, that the Lord has called and separated and equipped another man to this glorious work which is so necessary at, in a time like this very few men stand squarely on God's word but if you are eager to defend the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and His precious word, many are eager to be pleased uh, by the people and to please the people. But few think of the honor of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we thank the Lord that God has very mercifully prepared Brother Egwi to love his Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, to love the Word of God, and to preach the Word. And we pray that the Spirit of God will continue to equip and sustain and bless our brother with his presence in the days to come. And I would like to share the Word of God with you from 2 Timothy chapter 1 verses 6 to 18. So would you please turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 6 to 18. We shall read through it. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. 
but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who had abolished death and had brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles, for the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed unto thee, keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. This thou knowest, that all they which are in Asia be turned away from me, of whom are Phygelus and Hermogenes. The Lord give mercy unto the house of Onesiphorus, for he oft refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chain. But when, I, when he was in Rome, he sought me out very diligently and found me. The Lord grant unto him that he may find mercy of the Lord in that day. And in how many things he ministered unto me at Ephesus, thou knowest very well. The Lord has put in my heart to preach from this scripture portion and we shall meditate upon this wonderful portion of the scripture that impress upon us the power and the prospect of the pastoral ministry. The power and prospect of the ministry. Apostle Paul began in this passage that we read by saying, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. He was trying to stir the mind of Timothy. What was the relationship between Paul and Timothy? Well, if you were to consider the early part of this chapter, you see that Paul referred to Timothy as my son. In fact, he says, my dearly beloved son, in verse 2. Timothy was Paul's protege. Paul was given the grace by God to bring Timothy to maturity in Christian faith. And he watched like a father would do how Timothy grew in faith and knowledge and love for God and his word and the ministry. And that passion was, that fatherly love for the son was burning in, in Paul's heart when he wrote this epistle. So like a father, with a fatherly spirit. Here, Paul writes this letter. And the reason why he writes this <coughs> is because deep within Paul's heart it was a clear conviction that Timothy was a man of faith. And that you see in the preceding verse, namely verse 5. Where Paul says, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith, that is to say, sincere faith, unpretentious faith, that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I'm persuaded that in thee also. Timothy had the pleasure of having two godly women at home who paid special attention to bring this young child, their young child in the Lord, grandmother Lois and mother Eunice. They were believers. And according to 2 Timothy 3.15, Timothy was 
made known of the scriptures and the truth while he was a child. So he grew up in the knowledge of Christ in a godly home. Now, Timothy is reminded by Paul, you had an unpretentious faith which you learned from your mother and grandmother. Now because you have followed that good example of your parents who trusted the Lord Jesus Christ, I have seen in you tremendous work of God that prepared you for the ministry. So I'm going to do the next work which the Spirit of God appointed me to do that you may now become a well-established, well-equipped, well-empowered minister of the gospel. And so he says, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by putting on of my hands. So Paul was instrumental in ordaining Timothy. He laid hands on him as he said in verse 6. But now Paul calls Timothy's attention to the power of God that is for that is there for him to tap on every day of his ministry. And in order to help Timothy to be focused on the power of God that is made available to him, Paul narrated some wonderful truths of God's special grace, special goodness, special care for those who are in the ministry, especially for Timothy. And here we again when we look at verse 6, Paul says to Timothy that he should remember to stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. The gift of God. Well, that refers to the grace of God that equipped him for the work. It is a reference to the spiritual gift, the gracious gift of God that enabled Timothy to be a preacher, which, which was recognized and acknowledged by Paul when he laid hands on him. In fact, uh, in his previous letter, first letter to Timothy, uh, in chapter 4, verse 14, Paul already reminded him, let me read that to you, 1 Timothy 4, 14, Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. So together with Paul, there was a group of elders, the presbytery, that laid hands on uh, Timothy. And so, it was acknowledged by Paul and the presbytery that Timothy was a man called and gifted, spiritually equipped by God. So the power of the pastoral ministry was God's gracious equipping as the first token of God's power available to Timothy. God's gracious equipping. And he had to stir up himself in this reality that God has equipped him and that's why he is in the ministry. It's a gracious equipping. It's not that he was naturally gifted. It was not something that he has attained by his ability. It is a gift of and it is to remain for the rest of Timothy's life. He will never be taken away. When God bestows us with his blessings, he remains. And what a gracious thought it is. For all of us who are in the preaching ministry, in the pastoral ministry, our greatest comfort lies in this great truth that God has called and graciously equipped us. We are not always naturally talented to bear the burdens of the church or to study and uh, wisely expound the scriptures and apply it in people's life. But over the years we see how God 
change us, transform us, and give us gifts that we don't naturally possess. Tremendous transformation occurs in the life of a person whom God saves and calls and equips for the ministry. And so, the preachers like Timothy, and I say even Brother Equi, all of us should not grow careless about the gift that God has given to us, the equipping that God has given to us. We must be thankful. And we must turn it up. In other words, we must graciously use this, the ability that God gives to us through the Holy Spirit's work in us to glorify the one who gave that gift. To recognize God's calling and His equipping is very important for a preacher in his forward movement. Because many times he will be discouraged, many times he will be even opposed and stopped from time to time by the enemies of the gospel. The devil is at work, and sometimes even Brethren, I mean, people are redeemed by the Lord and being part of the church sometimes because of la lack of perception or lack of understanding or you call it misunderstanding or whatever can sometimes pull away from us and we can feel very lonely. Paul talked about it, isn't it? If, in fact, if you look at the last part of the passage that we read, he said in verse 15, This thou knowest that all they which are in Asia be turned away from me. And he mentions names like Phygelus and Hermogenes. Now you see that these people were known to the church. They were supporters of, uh, expected to support Paul, but they didn't. But again, the Lord provided someone else, the house of Anesiphorus, to help him. Now what we need to understand is that we may or may not receive support from our friends. We may have even enemies in the work. But we lean upon our Savior who calls us and equips us. And we trust Him. And then we can say, like Paul said, look at this example that Paul gives to Timothy, verse 11. Paul says, whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. He recognizes the equipping he received. So he says, Timothy, you are called. And I recognize that. Together with the presbytery, I laid my hands on you. But then let me also say, I'm also one who is called. And this is an example for you. We never ever shy away from our calling. There are those who say they are called, but then after a few years when they face troubles and problems and challenges, they quit the ministry. Now we cannot be like that. We count on our God's equipping, and we must remain to the very end. And every day we must say, yes, by His grace and His equipping, I'm a preacher. I'm a teacher of God's Word. For Paul, of course, he had that special calling of being an apostle. The second aspect of the power that God provides for pastoral ministry is God's continuous empowering. Not only his gracious equipping, but also his continuous or abiding empowering. Verse 7, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. God has not called us to be cowards, not of some timorous, servile spirit. We are to take on the challenges that, we, that come along the way. Paul is trying to stir up the heart of Timothy. God hath not given us the spirit of fear. We must be strong in our hearts. 
We should not be quitters in the ministry. We should not pull away from our calling and the equipping and the opportunities that God has given to us. We must be fearless because God says, be of good courage. Be strong and of good courage. Fear not. And also we are reminded that God gives unto us a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. Power cometh from Him every day, every minute. It is in His power we stand. We are often reminded of our weakness in the ministry. You see, there are many things that remind us of our weakness and frailties. The sheer amount of work we are called to do is enormous. You know, the church may be small. When the church is small, it has its peculiar struggles where a pastor had to pastor has to give himself in ways that you cannot probably imagine. You are attend to almost everything. Uh, there are pastors whom I know who don't have pianists in the church and then the pastor would even play piano. I know of a man who did that. He, he will announce the song and then he will go to the piano and play. I remember how I grew up. I, when I was sent to get some in a BB church, we only had about eight to ten people a Sunday. And we sometimes have to sing without any pianist. But that's okay. And my wife and I had to come to church early and prepare the room, put all the hymn books, and we do the cleanup after they everybody leave. And I also have to preach and to print the bulletin. There's no secretary. So many things. Visit people. It was too many. But many of those things I don't do anymore because the Lord has provided people and they do all those work. But then my ministry also has increased. So when a small in size or big in size, we are often reminded of our weakness, inability to meet the challenges. We have to cry out, oh Lord, please give me the grace to stand strong. And then you would have all sorts of weakness as well. You know, Timothy had many struggles to overcome. He seemed to have some physical ailment. According to 1 Timothy 5.23, he, he had some stomach infirmities. There, in fact, Paul said, drink no longer water, but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and thine own infirmities. So he had to overcome his physical problems. And also, we, we think that Timothy was naturally timid. There's not a very outgoing, uh, powerful looking person. In, when Paul wrote to the Corinthians about Timothy in 1 Corinthians 16, 10,